All right, then now we have the last one, the weirdest one, I think, number 13. We have that Juliana plans to invest money for 10 years, okay, 10 years, in an account account, in an account, sorry, paying 3.5% interest. Compounded in which way? Compounded annually. She expects the annual inflation rate, ooh, inflation, to be 2% per year throughout the 10-year period. Juliana would like her investment to be worth a real value of 4000 to be to be worth a real value of $4,000. Compared to current values at the end of the 10-year period, blah, 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 she considers two options. The first option we have, make a one-time investment at the start of a 10-year period. Okay. And the second one is invest 1000 at the start of the 10-year period and then invest an X amount into the account at the end of each year, including the first and last years. All right, cool. What the heck is going on? So for part A, we have for option one, determine the minimum amount Juliana would need to invest. Give your answer to the nearest dollar. All right, interesting. So some of you, just by context, by reading this, probably already identified that it's a compound interest problem. Okay, the hint I can give you for identifying that is that it says interest here. See, so if it says interest, especially if it says compounded something, in this case, compounded annually, those are big hints that this is probably a compound interest problem. So what you can do is pull out your formula booklet. See, here it is. Application interpretations formula booklet. Go ahead and search for compound interest. See, here it is. I think it's page five, if I'm not mistaken. It's page three. See, it's even closer. This is the compound interest formula, okay? It is between the geometric stuff and percentage error. So, compound interest, here it is. I know it might look weird, for some of you it might even look new, okay? But the cool thing about compound interest is that it's very, very, like, methodological in the approach, okay? I'm going to explain that in a second. What I mean by this is that you can notice I have five things. I have FV, PV, R, K, and N. See? K shows up in two places. It shows up here, shows up there. See? But it's five things I need. Dale? I need PV, which is present value. I need FV. Actually, let's just go in order. I have FV, future value. PV, present value. R, which is the percent. Cierto? It's going to be a percent. K is compounding periods per year, and N is amount of years. See? You can absorb that from what it says here, okay? So let's go ahead and see it in action, right? So if I go over here and I go ahead and plug it like that, what is FV, what is PV, what is R, what is K, what is N? Just by context, let's figure it out, see? So um, let's read it again, knowing the compound interest formula and see what we fill in as we go, see? So Juliana, plans to invest money for 10 years. One of these was time, one of these was years. Which one was it? Ah, N is the number of years. So N is going to be 10. N is 10. Cool, let's keep going. Yeah, in an account paying 3.5% interest. Okay, so interest over here is probably gonna be 3.5. Blah, 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 compounded annually. Okay, there was something about it being compounded in a certain way. See, here it says number of compounding periods per year. Okay, that's just fancy math language for like how many times you're charging the thing or the account or stuff like that. Okay, and so for periods, the things that you can find here is annually, which is our case, which is k equals one. The more common one is probably monthly, which would be, you guessed it, k equals 12. And lastly, you have quarterly, okay? Quarterly, quartz, one-fourth, you have K equals four, see? Those are like the classic ones. I don't think you're gonna find anything else. The weirdest one, I don't think it shows up actually, but it, it might be bi-monthly, which is once every two months. So that would be K K equals six, see? Um, whatever, man. So for periods, you have those buzzwords, annually, monthly, quarterly, bi-monthly. Here, it's, since we have it annually, we're gonna say that K has to equal one. All right, then we figure out that the inflation rate is 2%. Ah, does the inflation rate affect my R? Does it affect my FPPV? Let's see what happens. All right, this, this thing here, it's probably like where they try to trap you in this exercise, okay? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about inflation in a moment, all right? 
They later tell us that Juliana would like her investment to be worth, to be worth a real value of 4,000. So to be worth a real value of 4,000. So that is what her investment would like it to be. So FE is going to be real value of 4,000. I'm going to talk about what real value as well means. Okay, so just give me a moment. And then for, for part A, it asks us to determine the minimum amount Juliana would need to invest. So that would be what she invests today. That would be PV. So PV is actually going to be what we're looking for. All right. So this right now is what I'm working with. All right. So let's figure out FV. Let's figure out if R gets affected by inflation, etc. And so the rule of thumb I'm going to give you right now is that if you have inflation, it has to affect or eh, if you have inflation, you have to consider it at least once. I'm pretty sure you consider it only once, right? So that's like the rule of, of thumb I'm going to give you, like consider it just once, see? And so here, the way in which I can consider it is because if V has to be the real value of 4,000, that means I need to change my, FV cannot be just 4,000, see? It needs to be 4,000 converted to a real value, all right? How the hell do I convert it to a real value? What is a real value? A real value is when people talk about, um, I don't know, like a dollar from the 80s. How much would that be worth today? All right. That would be a dollar from the 80s brought into real value to 2023. All right. When people used to say like, oh, dude, with like five bucks, you could get like a full ass McDonald's meal and like a Porsche, you know. Like, they're talking about the real value of the dollar back in the day. So, you know, back in my day, like, a dollar was worth a lot more. Right? So, nowadays, a dollar is worth less in that sense. So, yeah. Okay, that's, like, real value. That's, like, when people talk about stuff in real terms, it's in respect to what it was before. See, it's always in, re in respect to time. And so, because here we have a 2% inflation rate, I can go ahead and plop that in like this. 1.02. And for how many years? For 10 years, okay? So that is going to be the real value of 4,000, okay? The real value of 4,000 is whatever number I get here. So I pop up my calculator. I was actually doing it just now. We have 4,000 times 1.02 to the power of 10. That gives me that, see? So my FB is actually 4,875.97. All right. And so now that I considered it at least once, or I considered it once, actually, I'm going to change this rule of thumb over here. Consider it once, like somewhere, ¿cierto? my FV changes, my R doesn't. All right. An alternative, I'm going to say right away, ¿cierto? because you're going to see in the answer key that it's actually like this. An alternative is that you don't change your FV, but you do change your R. See? So you would do 3.5% minus that 2% inflation you end up with 1.5%, see? So that is another approach you can give. Um, for me, it's more intuitive than what I just showed, see? To each their own, fuck it. If there's inflation, consider it somehow only once, see? So my FV, as I said, turns into that. All right, so now let's go back to the formula I showed earlier. So the formula I showed earlier, which is this one here, cierto, with all the blue check marks, we're going to have that. FV equals PV times one plus my interest rate thing divided by 100 times k to the power of k times n. So if I plug everything in, I end up with 4,875.977 equals my variable x parentheses one plus 3.5%. Actually, it's already in percent, so you can just leave it as 3.5 divided by 100 times one. See? Why is it times 1? Because k is 1. Compounding periods. 100 times 1 is still 1. I know. But just to be organized and just to follow the process, see, I'm going to plug everything in. See? Yeah. So that is what we're trying to find. See? Now, I need to get x alone, right? So you can actually probably just divide by all of this shit, and it's going to work out. Um, but I'm going to show a different trick. See? Especially for compound interest, sometimes your x can be like up here. And it's much harder to solve, see? And so I'm going to give you a trick that always works. It's the Kalk intercept trick. I do have a video on this. But very quickly, this is going to be y1. And this whole thing is going to be y2. What do I mean by this? In your calculator, you have y1 and y2 over here as lines. 
See? So if you put them as lines and find wherever they meet, that is going to be whatever makes that equation true where they intersect, and that is going to be your value of x. See? So it's going to make a little bit more sense in a second. Give me a moment. Let me go ahead and put that fraction here. Blah, 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 blah. Go ahead and graph. Boom. My window is nice enough already. I can see the intersection. I go ahead and do calc, interse calc intersect by pressing second trace. Hit that calc button. I go to intersect. Boom, boom, boom. Kapow. That's my intersection. See, so you can see that I, mm, what I got, cierto? basically, my my whatever was 3,456. 0.607. No, 671, see? 6718, comma, whoops. 4875, 0.977, see? Now, I do have a video explaining like how to read this result, but very quickly or intuitively, ¿cierto? This number showed up once somewhere, see? It showed up here. So that is like my y1, okay? My y2, or the number that I'm missing, ¿cierto? This one here doesn't show up anywhere else. So it has to be this one, all right? That's sort of like the intuition that I'm going to give you for now. So for part A, the minimum that she needs to invest is 3,456.607. Six, la, 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 la. whatever man this number see and what amount in dollars see so this is the minimum amount that juliana would need to invest for part a phrasing it like this is enough justification make sure you show how you got a fee okay so that is for part a for part b it is very fucking weird okay but i'm going to try to show you guys the most intuitive way possible all right so for option two, we need to invest a thousand at the start of the ten-year period, and then invest X into the account at the end of each year, including the first and last years. And we need to find the minimum value of X that Julian would need to invest each year. Give your answer to the nearest dollar. Now, when it says each year, this is a massive hint, okay? Because the compound interest that we just did is just once, cierto? In fact, option one is make a one-time investment. For investing each year, it's a little bit different, okay? And now the compound interest formula helps, but it's not everything we need to use, okay? If you go to your calculator and you go to this thing called finance and apps, okay? You press apps, this purple button, and you press finance. Here you have the TVM solver, okay? And the TVM solver is basically just the compound interest formula, but it has an added thing. It has the PMT, okay? And the PMT, very intuitively, is exactly what you need to invest each year. See, it's something about each period, each year, stuff like that. Option one was one-time investment. Option two, the moment you see something about each year, see, each year, you need to be thinking PMT, okay? And how do you find PMT? You need to use the finance app, all right? And so here, the intuition that I'm going to share is that you plug everything in, all right, except the PMT. And then you're going to find the answer. All right. And so in this case, see, it's very similar to part A, but it has one small difference. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, okay, is that your FV has to be the same. Okay. Because option one has to be at least the same or better than option two. And it's the future value corresponding to da, 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 this here. Actually, that's like the stronger reason. See, the FV comes from here, from the inflation thing. Uh, my present value, whoops, my present value comes from here. Because Juliana invested a thousand at the start of the 10 year period, that means she starts off by losing a bit. Okay. And I know this makes it, this is kind of weird. Like, why the hell is it negative? Cierto? Well, because now we're dealing with a, an each year investment, cierto? That is how it's going to end up turning positive, stuff, stuff, blah, blah, stuff like that, etc. See? And so just go with the flow for now. When you have PMT and she invests at the start of the year, and we are from the perspective of Juliana, that means she is losing 1,000 at the start of the year. See? So, negative 1,000. See? The R stays at 
because the the inflation was already concerted for FB, ¿cierto? I concerted inflation at least once, so I can leave the 3.5 as 3.5, K is 1, N is 10, see? And PMT is going to be calculator, all right, quite literally. So PMT is what we're looking for. PMT is going to be your X value, right? Um, and the calculator is going to help you find that. So I go ahead and plug everything in. N is 10. My percent is 3.5. My PV is negative 1,000. My PMT, we leave it at zero. So that's what the calculator is going to find. Um, you don't need to plug in X, actually. It's not necessary. You can just leave it at zero. FV is the one we found earlier. And these two are just like K and N, basically. I mean, sorry, it's just K. See? You leave them both as one. Forget about it. PMT, and their beginning. Because it is at the end of each year, end of each year, as it says there, that means PMT is going to be end. See? So we press enter. Nothing really changes because we're just plugging in data. See? We need to go again to the apps finance and go to, the, to TVM PMT. See? So this is what calculates PMT for us, given the stuff we plugged in. So what is PMT given all the stuff we plugged in? Boom. 295.3935. So for part B, the minimum value of X that Juliana would need to invest each year is negative 295.3935. Now, this right here is almost correct. It is incredibly close to being correct. What is wrong with this answer? Well, what is wrong with this answer is that you have a negative 295, all right? Because it is an amount that Julian would need to invest, okay, each year, technically it's positive, see? Why is it negative up here? You might be thinking, like, what the hell, you're contradicting yourself? Well, not really, see? This is this initial calculation, see? The initial calculation is from the perspective of Juliana, okay? Juliana starts losing $1,000, boom. So you leave it like that, and it's also negative 1,000 because when you're dealing with PMT, when you're dealing with PMT, you have to look at it that way. If you're not looking at it that way, if you don't have the PMT thing going on, it's like in part A where it's all positive and you're happy and you don't worry about it. Okay? But because there's PMT, because there's a each investment per year, and because you're facing it from the perspective of Juliana, you do negative 1,000 for PV. Okay? There's an alternative way where it's like from the perspective of the bank, and it's actually negative FV and positive PV. See? Again, there's like 14 million different ways to face this. Actually, if you look at the answer key, there's like three methods for part A. There's like three methods for part B. Like, actually, there's just two. But still, it's crazy, right? It, it gets nutty. There's a lot of ways to face this, okay? And so I hope that what you take away from this is sort of like the general intuitions, see? First of all, the intuition of what the compound interest formula even is in the first place, ¿cierto? Usually, you have four out of five of these variables, right? And so you need to find just one. The intuition that if you have inflation, you have to consider it just once, whether it's an FV or your R, ¿cierto? And also, when you have PMT, shit gets weird. Shit gets weird. And you really have to think about having a negative PV and thinking about the perspective of Juliana. See, that, that is the only scenario where you would have like a negative for PV, at least in what I have encountered. So that, ladies and gentlemen, would be number 13, and that would be paper one, 2022, if I'm not mistaken, time zone two. I hope it helped. Take it easy.